What's up guys, the Game and Review back here today, and today I wanted to do a video on the Mac. By video on the Mac, I don't mean some boring review or some other boring video. I decided to do a video on the top 5 Mac apps that I use most and I find that are most useful. Uh, these apps are apps that I love and use a lot on my Mac. This countdown is going to go in a format from like 5 to 1, so just be prepared for that. In the order of apps that I think are very estimable to the Mac. but. Don't get me wrong, uh, I love all the apps that I'm going to show and I highly re recommend all of the apps. Alright, to get started on the countdown, for number 5 I chose VLC Player. So VLC Player really isn't as popular on Mac as it is on Windows. So the reason I chose VLC is because, it's, uh, because of its versatility. See, I bring up QuickTime here, which is the integrated Mac video player it's not bad but there's a couple problems with it VLC allows me to play many formats that aren't supported in QuickTime as you can see here you just drop the media in and it starts playing for example I once moved a video file from my camera the camera that I used my surface 3 to download the file onto I usually USB to transfer the file over to my Mac because my Mac is my main computer just later to find out that QuickTime didn't support the file which really made me uh, frustrated because I needed this file to be shown. I was super mad because my Mac is my main computer, this MacBook Pro um, is my main computer, and I needed to show the video file on my Mac as I just said. VLC ended up coming to my rescue and played the file just fine. Also VLC, VLC is a great backup player for QuickTime just in case you have problems with it or it just decides to not work or if it won't start because there's many people that I know that have Macs and sometimes they'll try and open a video file and QuickTime just refuses to start. It's always better to have a backup than to be out of luck. By the way, I just came up with that. Not a bad little thing if I do say so myself. VLC is a great media player just as a backup as I just said and it can even be more versatile than the built-in QuickTime player. The number four app on my list is Microsoft OneDrive. So. As you can see, this folder up here is Microsoft OneDrive. That's my personal OneDrive folder. Uh, OneDrive is yet another app that is very popular on Windows, mainly because it's made in-house by Microsoft and Windows made by Microsoft, etc., etc. OneDrive and iCloud are my main storage providers because I have a Mac and an iPhone. But um, the reason I love OneDrive and the reason it's on this list is because of its versatility. OneDrive is accessible from everywhere or every one of the devices I own, such as my phone, Mac, and PC. So it runs here on my Mac, there's an app for the iPhone and for Android, so for you Android users, you're not out of luck if you want to use OneDrive. Anyway, OneDrive will back up certain files that my iCloud won't. An example of this are photos that I take in raw format on my Nikon, which are fairly big too, by the way. They're like 33 megs each, I think. iCloud doesn't know what the format is, so it gets confused as such when it tries to back up iCloud is very useful for iOS backups and like photo library backups for like photos that you take on your iPhone and whatever. But for, other than that, I wouldn't really use it as a main storage thing. That's what my OneDrive is. So as you can see here, it says one terabyte and there's 7.3 gigs used. I don't really use that much. And there's another great thing that I'm about to get into, or actually I'll get into it now. So on OneDrive, it just runs secretly in the background. You can either have it run um, manually where you actually have to open the icon and then get it to run, but I have it set up where it opens at login. So here, when it runs, it automatically, uh, whenever a file goes in here, it will automatically update to the cloud or it will um, just refresh every couple minutes to see when last updated. So it was last updated here. And then open OneDrive folder and then you can even quit it and open preferences so there's not that much hide doc there's about here too version sorry for not showing that much for OneDrive there's not really that much to show because it's so well integrated into the computer sure there is storage that's completely free like Google Drive and uh, which my school uses but the thing about Google is that anything you put into your drive or your storage can be used for advertising or other purposes by Google the same thing applies with Google Photos and stuff like that. That's why Google people are a little iffy about using Google. Now onto the number three choice on my list, which is actually another Microsoft product. The pick is Microsoft Word. I personally have a small bias to the word uh, Word over like Google Docs and other stuff like that. 
because I've been using it for so long. It's basically the only typer I've ever used. As, uh, as I mentioned before, my school uses Google Drive, which also means that we use Google Docs because they integrate. I don't feel that Google Docs is any better than Word and I find that it's actually not up to its par, but that's my opinion. I find through my use in Docs that it doesn't pick up as many spelling area errors as Word does. For example, if you type in I in Docs, it won't capitalize it automatically. This script for my video actually, it actually was typed up on 2016 Word, which I have here. I find that the 2016 Word update, which um, I, ha I have open right now, is very clean and modern and have no issues with it running at all. Another great thing that I like better about Word is that your files are local, so you can, I you can save them right to your computer. Google, you actually have to remember to save your local files to a certain place. Um, as you can see, there's many templates here too, which makes it very versatile. The runner up on this list, so number two, is an app that I actually use as much as my number one app. Plus, I was also debating having it as my number one app. That app is Spotify. Spotify has been around for years, um, and it's been arguably the most popular streaming service there is. But there is a bit of, a, of an elephant in the room now, because Apple has their own music streaming service, Apple Music. So why not use Apple Music on a computer that's built by Apple themselves. Well, there's really one big reason for that. And that reason is price. Apple Music, you have to pay every month. Sure, you get the three month free trial, but once that's over, um, sure you do on the Spotify too, but that's only if you have premium, which uh, if you see here, I use the free service. So all you need is an email. And if you want, you can follow me on Spotify, the game and review, same thing as my YouTube channel. So Spotify is a great music streaming service, especially since it's free. And for me, I keep the free because I'm just a casual listener, but I feel that Spotify is the most polished streaming service on the Mac. Even though um, Apple Music has been around and it's made for the Mac and everything is optimized and all that, I feel since Spotify has been around for so much longer, it has an advantage. Okay, finally, down to the pick that the whole video was rolling around. The number one pick, Google Chrome. This may not be the, that big of a surprise, considering it's the best web browser in the world in my opinion and it's also made by the most popular search engine in the world which is Google quick fact for you guys all the Google services crashed a few years ago and the amount of web traffic that went down was 40% so Google accounts for 40% of all web traffic on the internet so that's how big Google is that's how popular they are anyway back to the video or back to my pick there's so much to love about Chrome for its from its ability the theme what you have here to its ability to add plugins up here which I personally don't use but are very useful for some people to Google's free productivity suite Google Docs Google Slides and Google Sheets Chrome really only makes sense if you own and actively use a Google account because you can't really take advantage of the features without one. Me being a YouTuber, I use Chrome as my main browser for pretty much everything. Also, there is an ability to switch between your accounts. For example, if you at work, so you have your accounts here, you can change between them so you can add an account. For many people, I think that Chrome is a smart choice for Mac. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video as it really does help out the channel. And even subscribe to see more great content. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.